Hello and welcome to our very first trading day for season 2023. Over the next week and a half, we will take you through all the wheelings and dealings that are going on behind the scenes at club headquarters. A big welcome to David King, Ben yeah. Dixon and the guru at this time <laughs> of year, John Ralph from the Herald Sun. Ralphie, there's a little bit happening already. Hello, crew. Hello, Sarah. This trade period is officially warming up, so big developments with a big name. So, Collingwood have officially made a play for Lockie Schultz from Fremantle. Essendon has lodged bids for Todd Goldstein. He is now an Essendon football player, Ben Mackay. They've lodged a deal for him. We're waiting on a compensation decision. We expect to be pick three. Xavier Dersma has, in the last 20 minutes, asked for a trade to Essendon. So we expect that he will be an Essendon player next year. But the big story result revolves around Collingwood. So 33 goals for Lockie Schultz this year at Fremantle. He's finished fifth and sixth in the last two uh, best and fairest. He is an unrestricted free agent uh, uh, next year, given, of course, that he was delisted by Fremantle a couple of years back. So they're thinking to themselves, we probably need to trade him. I've already asked about Tyler Brockman. Is it too late to get into the race for him? But I think right now they're coming to the grips with the fact they're about to lose Lem Henry and Lockie Schultz. He was a very, very damaging player. And I think the fallout, um, well, it reflects upon Jack Ginevan. I think he's potentially in trouble. He's a contracted player, but with a list that has Bobby Hill, Bo McCreary, Jamie Elliott, and then Schultz in front of him. I think Collingwood loves the structure and the discipline with which um, uh, this player plays. And Jack Ginevan potentially plays on talent. So a big decision to head ahead on a couple of those players. And um, yeah, big name there that, um, that I think would fit perfectly uh, Dicko and Kingy into the Collingwood forward line. Yeah, well, there's no doubt. I reckon Kingy, from a chaos perspective, you've got Elliot, you've got Bobby Hill. You mentioned Ginevan took so long to get himself into that side. If you throw a Lockie Shields in there, he is ahead of Ginevan in terms of his form and what he can do in the front half. He's a poor man's Papley for me. He's got the energy. He, he's a, a, a Ford 50 harassment player that every club is looking for. He's an experienced campaigner. He's, he hits the scoreboard and when he does hit the scoreboard he becomes a multiple goal kicker more often than not. He's had a fantastic couple of seasons. Was it 60 goals across two years now? They're hard to find. I, I tell you, they'll build a statue of Graham Wright if he keeps this up yeah. after <laughs> what he did last year to set sail again already in 2023. Yeah, so he has a crack at Tom Duda. He misses out on him. Has a crack at other players as well. Can't I quite get there and we think, what's plan B? Bang! This is plan B. Just absolute ruthless intent. It is a forward line that he's absolutely stacked. We know the midfield with the likes of Nick Dacos and co uh, are pretty elite as well. They're still looking for an intercept defender. Imagine if they found another intercept defender. We'd say, what do they want for already? And then they bring in some, some more shock weapons. And that's what you said, Kingy. So it gets back to the good teams just need to top up that little bit more, Sarah, and, and get their little edge on the competition. And you look at Oleg Markov. He's a great example. Collingwood just say, Tom Mitchell, Ole come in and they play their role. So to put a Shields in that forward line is pretty damaging. It's a worry for Fremantle. I mean, they've, they've lost a, a few now over the last couple of seasons that are, that are seriously important. I don't think they realised how good Blake Akers was for them and then you see what he's been able to do uh, this season at Carlton. This guy's the same. They provide a lot of spark, a lot of energy when the team's not necessarily flying. He come fifth in the best and fairest behind Sarong, Brayshaw, Ryan and Jackson. I mean, that's a pretty good that's a pretty good crew for Fremantle in terms of where they're placed in their salary cap. So you lose four last year and you could just pass that off. It's just one year. Everyone loves Justin Longmuir. Then you lose Liam Henry and now you lose Lockie Schultz, who's a really popular, a popular member of that team. So many... Uh, the Premiers are getting better and Fremantle right now seem to be going backwards. That's a, a massive concern for Justin Longmuir. Some more news out of Collingwood just breaking this afternoon. Nathan Murphy, of course, a premiership player with the Pies, but we know he was struck down with concussion early in that grand final. That's correct. So a big exclusive from Mark Robinson, the Herald Sun chief football writer. He says that he's, uh, his career is in the balance. So his management firm has asked the AFL, through Stephen Mead, the new legal counsel, for some uh, advice at the AFL's concussion board. What should we do with Nathan Murphy? I spoke to him on last year's uh, finals eve and he talked about eight or nine of concussions, losing consciousness, having blackouts, uh, vomiting, his part and having to support him there. He knew there was a decision ahead. Um, and, of course, he passed that concussion test yeah, after this contest. Uh, I tried to come back on the field and then suffered delayed concussion. I think we all scratched our heads to think, how could he have been passed fit as a result of that? Um, but, again, it may well be that they need to replace multiple defenders rather than just Nathan Murphy. Well, I know this issue, King, and you've been big on it all year. It's amplifying in terms of head um, contact, concussions, and players got to make the decision. Paddy McCartan's a good one because he was in that same scenario with the same symptoms and yet came back to Sydney and played some football. So, I mean, they're all individual cases, but uh, we're treating a little bit more severe now. 
they leave a big hole. In, in terms of just the list profile, to, to keep to this, probably this show, the concussion discussion is probably for another day, but that's that's something that's going to really impact hard. They're hard to find. The due date de um, decision to go up north probably really impacts Collingwood now, you'd say. Yeah, and probably next year they'll be OK. They have Jeremy Howe there, who's going to play as a 33-year-old. He was elite in the grand final, mm. but all of a sudden you're relying upon Billy Frampton uh, to try and allow uh, Jeremy Howe and also Darcy Moore to play as those intercept players. So, look, there are players out there. There are the likes of, um, of Dougal Howard at St Kilda, but all of a sudden you're having to give up picks and, and cap space as well to secure those kind of players. You mentioned Tom Duday. He is one of the day one done deals. There are a couple that are signed, sealed and delivered. Yeah, that's right. So Tom Duday is off to uh, the Brisbane Football Club. First round compensation, pick 19 for Adelaide. Now, a couple of deals have also gone through. Gold Coast has traded pick four to the Bulldogs for picks 10, 17 and a future first rounder. We'll unpack that one a little bit later. And Port Adelaide has traded its future first rounder to Fremantle for pick 23. I'll try and move that one on for a Salva Radigalia. They also get a future second rounder there. So a couple of deals have been done. Still waiting for a lot of those massive heavyweight deals to arrive. So where does Tom Dudo fit into that Brisbane back line, King? Well, it's a pretty strong back line anyway, isn't it? It's a pretty strong team. So he's not going to be asked to come in and be the reason they win the flag, but come and compliment that, uh, that back six. I can see them looking at the Stasevich role. I know that everyone will say Leicester and maybe Darcy Gardner, but I think he can get more out of Stasevich up the field, whether he's a wingman or a, a halfback or even an on-baller potentially. I know he wants to play on-ball. And maybe this is an opportunity where you can, you can not just have the cost of one player but a domino effect and find uh, two wins out of it. So, so didn't Collingwood prove this year that some one person's trash is another's treasure, the likes of Billy Frampton, who played such a valuable role in the grand final? So Adelaide has reported this year, had a five-year deal at maybe half a million dollars on the table for Tom, and then, of course, the second knee reconstruction. They pulled the deal, really aggressive. Two years at about $250,000 they offered him. Now, Collingwood and Brisbane got into a bidding war, uh, my understanding is the deal's four years with a 50-year trigger at about $680,000. That is astonishing. That is big money, almost triple the uh, Adelaide offer. And yet, who's to say that he's not going to play a fantastic role at Brisbane next year? Yeah, interesting. He's only averaged 10 games a season in his uh, first eight years. So I like him, Digger. I, I, oh, I do I'm too. I'm a fan of this guy. I think that he plays the right way. He plays. He sacrifices his own game for the team. He's a really solid citizen. He's going to go up there. He'll be no trouble to the to this the culture of their football club. Will he? He'll only enhance that and get better there. There was one stage where he was a ca uh, captaincy material for the Adelaide Crows football club. Mm -hmm. That wasn't that long ago. So I, I think it's a great get. And we make a lot of the money. But, but the average wage is going through the roof over the next couple of years, so maybe maybe we're getting carried away. And just one quickly on um, on Darcy Gardner. So Dom Ambrosio, the Brisbane list manager today, said, no, no, he's going nowhere. Now, if I was Collingwood and I was going to lose, lose a Nathan Murphy, we saw how well he was able to play in a couple of finals, including on Charlie Curno, I'd be making a call to Darcy Gardner's manager. And just to touch on your um, another man's trash is another man's treasure. We renamed that during the year. It's not a flea market anymore. It's the fly market. It's the fly, yeah. it's the fly, fly market. market. Okay. He's, just made, he's made it his own market now. He's just getting... Uh, uh, trash and treasure um, turning it around.